Item. SCP-136. Object Class. Euclid. Special Containment Procedures. No extraordinary containment procedures are necessary. SCP-136 is to be kept in a standard 10 meters x 10 meters x 10 meters concrete containment room. SCP-136-1 is to be kept in a locked transparent plastic case. Measuring 0.5 meters x 0.5 meters x 0.5 meters. Placed on a table in the center of the room. Video surveillance is unnecessary when SCP-136 is not being actively examined. As of Incident I-136C. See Incident Reports. Only Class D personnel may enter the SCP-136 containment chamber more than once in any 30-day period without special authorization from Director. Description. SCP-136 has no effect on non-humans. SCP-136 describes two phenomena. SCP-136-1 is of variable appearance, but generally manifests as a crude clay, wood, metal, or cloth doll, usually identifiable as female and usually between 10 and 30 centimeters in length. The doll appears as male in approximately 10% of viewings. SCP-136-1 has no unusual properties that can be measured empirically. Mass spectrometry of samples taken from the doll return typical results for its present material. When the doll is damaged to the extent where it no longer appears human, usually upon removal of the head or all limbs, it vanishes completely and reappears in a new configuration within a 1, 1, meter radius. Testing of complete vaporization pending. SCP-136-2 manifests only when SCP-136-1 is viewed for approximately 20, 20, minutes. Though like SCP-136-1, it has a somewhat variable form. The first indication of SCP-136-2's presence is a sound of laughter of a gender corresponding to the appearance of SCP-136-1. Personnel who hear the laughter report it as sounding creepy or scary. The laughter lasts for an interval of anywhere from 5 seconds to 2 minutes, after which is a period of silence, usually of about 5 minutes, after the period of silence. SCP-136-2 appears along with the abrupt disappearance of SCP-136-1. SCP-136-2 is an incorporeal nude or partially nude figure corresponding to the gender of SCP-136-1. SCP-136-2, ranging in size from 1.9 to 2.1 meters is always posed in a provocative manner and moves through the air at a slow walking pace, 0.2 ms towards the subject, s. If more than one subject is present, each will see the form as moving towards him or herself. As it approaches, the volume of the laughter increases. By the time SCP-136-2 is within 1 to 2 meters, the subject invariably has gone rigid in fear collapsed, or backed up until he or she hits a wall. SCP-136-2 usually remains stiff until it is within approximately 5 centimeters of the subject, whereupon it will scream once before vanishing. 10 to 15 seconds later, SCP-136-1 will reappear in its previous location in a different configuration. The apparition has a very disturbing appearance. Its mouth is far too wide, frozen in a rictus of pain and arousal. It will occasionally bare its teeth or lick its lips. Its irises take up almost the entire sclera of its eyes, which appear mad and bloodshot. If female, it will have an absurdly narrow waist and large breasts. The experience of viewing SCP-136-2 is profoundly upsetting and has universally caused night terrors for up to six months in every single subject.
possibly as a result of its psychic intrusion. After a viewing, most subjects are unable to leave the containment room without assistance. Interestingly, Class D personnel with a history of sexual deviancy still experience a strong negative reaction to 136-2. See Incident Report I-136A.